Time for our Sunday talk. So last week we had a spirited debate about women in cabinet. Tonight we tackle men's rights. A study out this week shows the rate of suicide is way up among men in their 50s, years when in the past that group was typically happier. And it's not just men of this age who are struggling. There's a move on university campuses to support younger men too. But it's controversial. Here's why. If we have to set this up to normal black history, well, power to us, we have to. For years, those who face challenges have come together on campus. Form clubs and organizations based on self-expression and gender expression. The University of Toronto is a feminist community. But last week, Ryerson University's Student Union turned down an application for a Men's Issues Awareness Society. And it's not just Ryerson, there have been protests at the U of T. We're here to shut down an event that is promoting the patriarchy. At the University of Ottawa. Hey, hey, MLS, we don't care what and Queens. Why are you so frightened of hearing a, an opinion different from your own? Men's rights groups say men need support too. In family law, where fathers get sole custody in only 7% of cases. And in education, where many boys are falling behind early on in school. The men's movement used to be more about support and self-esteem. You know, I'll never be understood. Uh, I don't feel listened to. You know, it feels futile. Um, what we want to accomplish here is a different feeling. But their tactics are changing. A men's rights group in Edmonton took a campaign on sexual assault awareness and turned it into what many women saw as a nasty bit of victim blaming. There is a double standard of holding men collectively responsible for the actions of a small subset of men. I'm joined now by our panelists. Sachi Cole is a senior writer at BuzzFeed Canada. Jonathan Kay is editor-in-chief at Walrus Magazine and a familiar face, former CBC panelist, lawyer Adam Goldenberg is with us tonight. Welcome back, Adam. Thank you, Wendy. So you're also here as a student, because I think you were a student like for 25 years? As... Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Finally finished. So I'll come to you in just a moment, but I'm going to start with John. I'm going to start with the guys tonight on the guys' issues. What do you think about this on-campus men's groups? Should they be allowed? Should they be encouraged? Well, look, I think the left has, has largely won the culture war on campuses. Now it's just a question of whether... Uh, the right can have some sort of dignified fighting retreat, and I think the men's rights movement is part of that. I think, obviously, all groups should have freedom of speech on campus. Uh, I don't think men should be treated any differently than women or any other group. What do you think, Adam? So I don't think it's actually a free speech issue. No one is saying that these groups shouldn't be allowed to exist. The issue is whether they should get formal recognition from student governments or funding from student governments, and that's a different proposition. Because, of course, they should be allowed to exist. People are allowed to have opinions that we might disagree with. My view is that you don't want to feed these trolls by shutting them down, by attacking them, because that's exactly the kind of attention that they want. I don't even Wait want to sec. dignify so, so that point sec, of view. They're, they're trolls? Yeah, How, have they become tr so, so, so I'm a troll? Well, I, I, don't, know, I don't know if these are your <laughs> no, views well, or not. Well, it's, it's a men's issues group. How does that make them a troll? Because it's not actually about men's issues, and, we, and we'll come to this, I'm sure, but I think what oftentimes these groups care about is exposing the culture of progressive thinking that doesn't tolerate conservatism on campuses. They have a point how's to that prove. a bad thing? Well, because it's not the point that the group claims to purport well, to part, represent. Well, part of men's issues is the fighting the culture war. If you're saying one side of the fight, uh, culture war gets to fight, the other side doesn't because it's a view you don't, you don't agree with? No, I, I mean, and they're again... No, but they're a troll because of that? No, I think what they are out for is attention. I think they want to make a point about the campus environment, and lot, I, want them, I don't are, want them to make that point. But lots of groups are seeking attention. Why is that a bad thing? Well, I think that the difference... There's a difference between seeking attention for the sake of seeking attention and seeking attention because you have a point of view that actually matters. How do you, how do you know i got to bring Sachi in here, and then we'll <laughs> open this up again. What do you think about these groups on campus? I mean, part of the reason for them being turned down at Ryerson was that they yeah. would make women nervous. Yeah, it would make me nervous. If I'm a woman that goes to a university and there's a men's rights group that's right next door, of course that would make me nervous. I do agree that, obviously, they're, they're trying trying to get attention uh, and, and they want to be, I guess, validated or invalidated and then they get to feed off of that. But I don't think that, think that they should But why should exist. would it make you afraid? Because I think a lot of the men's rights movement is actually a response to anxiety about women doing better. And you see this with men's rights groups and men's rights activists who claim that women falsify rape claims all the, all the time, which is 
not remotely true. And it's a direct response to women speaking up and having a voice and talking. And you see that with posters that say, you know, don't be that guy, and they've changed it to don't be that girl. And now, again, the onus is on women. I'm hear long, uh, hearing a lot of projection here, saying, oh, oh well, you know, what your group really wants is this bad thing. When I pass a feminist group or a group of trans activists, I don't say, you know, what you really want is some negative thing I am project on you. Let them organize. Let them be like any other group and let them have their say, and then we can decide whether but what they say... But their say has been bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> Look, by the way, when I was, when I was younger, uh, way back when? in the 1990s, oh, okay. way back in the 1990s, there was genuine concern about safety on campus, especially for women. I went to McGill. And there was a lot of violence in the McGill ghetto, which is where a lot of students lived. And people organized. There was walk-safe programs because it was a safety issue. People were actually being battered and, in some cases, assaulted. I think that's different now? Yeah, it's not any and different. So it's, of course, that's something that's needed. But what's happened is we've dilated the definition of the word safety. So now safety isn't just about protecting people from being hit or raped. Safety is about protecting protecting people from ideological viewpoints no, that they find no, no, objectionable. No, 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 no. And safety, that, that, no. that is a perversion of the word safety. No, no. Sa safety is feeling like you can go out to a party at your university campus, and if, God forbid, something terrible happens, you're not going to be disbelieved the next morning. And protecting you from trolls, apparently. Trolls online because who have views you don't like, no, again, that's also that's safety. not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is these groups want attention for the sake of having How attention. How do you know what they want? Are, are you well, a member of this group? they're telling you. They're, they're telling saying you. we want to raise these issues, and you're saying that's a bad... That's the word you used. Oh, that's so, a Sachi, bad this, issue. This is the list of what they say are their issues. This is Canadian Association for Equality, and their guidelines are followed by a lot of these campus groups. Uh, boys, crises issues like education, bullying, suicide, which we've seen is, is up among older men. Men's health issues, family law, custody is an issue, probably not when you're 20, but later. Legal biases against men and social media misandry, oh, hatred. But, but Wendy, as we know, they're just trying to get attention for these issues, <laughs> which is a bad thing. And by the way, on campus, it is completely true <laughs> that for decades, we did not take the problem of sexual assault seriously. That is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Now, what you do sometimes see is you have a due process problem. You see this in the United States. There's 50 cases going through the courts in the United States where men have gone to the courts because they couldn't get what they consider to be due process on campus. They're right. saying but that's not actually this is what a these serious are about. Well, that actually, is, that actually, is, that is one of the issues they have explicitly raised. Yes, so, but, it's, but those issues, I mean, for example, the men's health issue, right? Men don't take care of themselves. There are mental health challenges that are more pronounced in men than in women. These are real issues. The issue of making sure that there's a process on campus so we don't brand people as rapists unless they've had a chance to defend themselves against those sorts of allegations. Those aren't bad things. But when you lump them in with this agenda, that aims to expose some liberal bias, the same sort of people that say, oh, the mainstream media are a bunch of liberals, that is doing a disservice I, to these I, issues sorry, that I agree I, with, John, I don't are important. understand your viewpoint. You're saying, well, this issue is good, this issue is good, this issue is good, but they have this political bias on the current state of ideology that you object to, so they don't deserve the same Sachi, recognition what, as 100 other groups. What, that Sachi, makes no what is sense. the argument that these groups are really about stopping the battle against sexual assault? What is the argument saying? Yeah, that, what, what's the, the proof of that, that that's what these groups Listen, are into? Listen, I mean, you can, you can go online and you can have a thousand men send you a note as a woman that they would like to kill you. <laughs> when I go outside, I get men stop me and ask me why I'm not smiling. This is happening all over the place. And obviously, there are a lot of issues that are happening with boys and with men, but I think those are issues that, are, that have way more complexity than, than just this issue. Like, the issue of men having higher suicide rates, I think that actually speaks to how uh, mental health is stigmatized, how men feel like they can't ask for help. I think that's actually an issue of how ma modern masculinity affects men negatively. But I feel like this movement in particular is a direct response to having anxiety about women having something to say. I think, I think it's fair to say that there's something oppositional here. This is to answer John's question. It's not just about saying that men need more attention paid to their mental health issues or men need more attention paid to the challenges that boys have in our education system. It's the fact that women are the problem, that Wait, women's that, equality is an Adam. issue, and that the, directing these men's issues as some kind of response, as women cannot gain because then men lose, yeah. that's what I think is Adam, intellectually are, disingenuous. Are you telling me that a campus group has been created that's oppositional in nature? <laughs> that students are oppositional in nature? That they're actually being militant and feisty? And that they're going against established ideologies? That's a scandal. Because when I went to school, <laughs> 
all of the groups conformed entirely to the dominant <laughs> ideology. Okay. So I think you've identified a real no, scandal no, here. No, that now you're making a straw man argument. I'm no, not I'm saying not, that these because everything be... you've said is ridiculous. No, because the very the first idea thing I said, that the an oppositional thing... group should be banned is just an entirely the very first thing to say. But, okay, but you're the very first thing. No, John, the very first thing I said was that these groups should not be banned. You've precisely what I Actually, no, no, but you said they should not be recognized by student societies, which means they don't get funding and they cannot have events on campus. So they have a right to funding. No, but you're saying that they should effectively be ostracized. Any group that forms get whatever money they want Obviously, from the student you're government. Obviously, you're not going to let a hate There's group in. This is a legitimate here. policy issue, and you're saying no. Don't let them have events on campus. Don't let so them have. So you should get to decide what the Ryerson student no, government. No, I'm saying they should be treated students. fair play. And you're so saying think, they don't get fair I think, play. I think one of the other th things that frustrates me about the men's rights movement uh, is that it's often a lot of straight white men talking to other straight white men about the issues that straight white well, men are having. Well, let's ban that. Let's ban that. Let me get that's the a, thought a out. Thing. Okay. And I think it ignores a lot of other issues that can actually that are actually totally valid within what's going on with men. I mean, like, for example, like, they don't talk about how racialized men have different experiences than white men. They don't talk about trans men. They're not talking about queer men at all. They're talking about the most privileged class of men that there is. Hey, we need our own group, too, okay? I know, you're, you're long <laughs> So you don't see any of this, John, as being a backlash, like a nasty backlash against women Actually, on getting this, ahead? I'm going to agree with the other panelists. There obviously is an element of backlash. There's a culture war out there, and there are people who feel tribalistic on both sides. They say, you know, it's feminism versus the opposite of feminism, it's men versus women. Obviously, and especially... What's the opposite of feminism? Well, I was trying to figure out <laughs> masculinism. Misogyny it doesn't I mean, sound... It, do, it, yeah. it doesn't sound... Masculinism doesn't sound right. The point is, obviously, when you're a student, it's a time when you're oppositional. You pick sides, you're tribalistic about your ideology, and a lot of these groups are expressions of that. I gotta it's wrap not up. a bad thing, it's part of campus I think life. There's a difference between having your viewpoint heard and demanding that others listen to you as a matter of right. That's where I disagree with you. Gotta wrap up in 30 seconds, but Sachi, 20 years ago it was women's rights, hear me roar, now men's groups are trying to. Where, where, where is this going? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so sad about it. By the way, my side, so the, my side is losing the culture war. We just want to go out with a you're little not, bit of dignity. You're not losing the I culture am. war. We all no, know I'm not. losing the culture war. No, you were still part of the most privileged class in North yeah. America. I don't know where you're getting that, that you're you. losing, yeah. you're Check losing out, anything. Look, look at who sits you're on corporate nothing. boards. I look feel, who dominates the profession. I feel so in politics. every industry, you're here. Really you're so sitting here. I feel so empowered right now. I know you too. Thank you. Well, everybody's happy once again. Thank you very much. I I don't know if I learned anything, but it was was fascinating. Thank you so much. Nice to see you again, Adam. Thank you. And Sachi. And John, of course.